Hi, I'm Brianna, and this is Read to Me from Zero to Three Early Childhood Literacy. And this program is funded by the Terrell Fund. So today's goals is to understand early brain and child development, understand and discuss early childhood literacy, and learn ways to build language and vocabulary skills in children for school readiness. A little bit about me. I am the Irvington Family Development Center Family Success Center Coordinator under the partnership. I have 10 years experience working with children. So I started out as a preschool teacher for three years and then I was a nanny for seven. And I have a public health degree from Montclair State. So what is early childhood literacy? Early childhood literacy is the knowledge and skills children need in order to learn to communicate, read, and write. So let's go into some early childhood myths. The first one, children don't need to learn how to read or write until they go to school. Well, that's not true because if you think about it, if you teach your child how to read and write before they go to school, then they are ahead of the curve by the time they start. Number two, my baby isn't paying attention, so I shouldn't bother. Well, your baby does pay attention, just not in the same aspect as you or I pay attention, but their little brains are absorbing their things in the environment. So you should definitely assume that they are paying attention. The last one. My baby doesn't talk yet, so I don't need to talk to them. Well, that's not true because babies learn how to speak from adults speaking. So school readiness. School readiness is a child's ability to have a certain set of emotional, behavioral, and mental skills needed to learn, work, and do well in school. And sometimes, we'll, unfortunately, we'll see what we call a school readiness gap. So a school readiness gap is what we call a health disparity. And a health disparity is simply an inequality. So let me give you an example. So you'll have a child that grows up in community A, right? So community A will have high quality childcare, a great high quality library that's stocked with an abundance of resources. And then you'll have a child that grows up in community B. Now community B has childcare, but it's not considered high quality. And it has a library, but it's not as greatly stocked as community A. So what we'll see is that children that grow up in community A have better school readiness, school outcomes than children that grow up in community B. And that's where the disparity is because the inequality between the two children that grow up in two different towns is apparent. So how do we close that gap? Between 1998 and 2010, 1,000 public and private kindergartens across the United States shrunk the school readiness gap by 16% in the reading category. So how they do that? So they had fast improvement in the reading skills, and that was achieved by providing more books in the households. And then also, there's more access to internet and affordable programs that help reading skills. Early brain development. So the first 1,000 days have the greatest impact on your baby's development. And the first 1,000 days is from when the child is in the womb until they are two and a half years old. And then you'll notice that babies are constantly learning. They don't need as much time to learn or as much repetition. So that's why a child might catch on to things faster than an adult. I have an example. So when I was at the daycare, I had two little girls that only spoke Mandarin and I got them in September and I'd say, couple months after that, just from them being in the classroom, they were speaking fluent English. And that's because they were only two years old. So they were able to grasp the language really fast. And then finally, it says that 90% of the child's brain development happens before the age of five. So this just gives you an illustration of the brain development from newborn to adults. So you'll notice from the newborn age to the two-year-old age, that the brain pretty much triples in size. And then you'll notice from two-year-old brains to the adult brain that while it does grow, it really doesn't grow a lot. So that's why it's easier and more efficient to get early childhood literacy skills in children from the newborn age until they're two. Literacy-rich environments. So a literacy-rich environment is simply an environment that encourages your child to read and to speak. And what we like to see out of these environments, we like to see them be interesting, inviting, comfortable, and filled with easy to get materials. So that simply means we like to see that there's materials that are in your child's reach so they can grab them on their own. 
And we like to see the environment that grabs your child's attention. So you might notice that there's some activities that your child likes more versus others. So try to keep the ones that they like more out and available and, and reach for them. And these can be anywhere. So they can be in, the, in your house, they can be in the classrooms, they can be in family, family success centers. So I want you to take a minute and think about ways that you can make your home a literacy rich environment. Did you think of some ways? So here's some ways to make your home word friendly, which will make it a literacy rich environment. So you can post letters and numbers in the rooms that they play in. So I know for my nephew, he liked the letter magnets on the refrigerator. And at first he was just playing with the letters, getting familiar with them. And then as time moved on, he learned how to spell his name and other words. You can label things around your house, which will encourage reading. And make sure you have books, crayons, and pencils available in easy to reach areas. And then you also want to model the behavior because we know that children like to mimic what they see us adults do. So if they see you reading and doing things of that nature, they'll want to join in too. You can learn through narrating. And with narrating, we simply want to see you talk to your child, talk to your baby. You should do it often and early, even while they're still in the womb, because they'll learn your voice. Um, narrating, you just go about your day, your actions, your routines, your movements, simple things like that. And when you do this, you really want to make sure that your baby feels safe. And please, please always remember to just keep practicing and keep going. So an example of how you can simply narrate your day, you can say, mommy is going to change your diaper now so you can be dry. Or we're walking to the train. Can you hear the train? So for this activity, I'd like you to ask your child to find things around the house that start with the first letter of their name. So the purpose of the activity was to help your child with letter recognition and to show you how you can turn your home into a literacy rich environment. Communicating with sign language. Communicating with sign language is a good thing to do when you have very young babies who don't speak yet or just children who aren't verbal. And these signs are just a few simple signs that can go a long way. So this sign means eat, all done or finish, tired or sleepy, hurt, more, drink, mom, dad. So you can learn through reading together. Make sure you're introducing books to your little ones and make sure that they're age appropriate. So for babies and toddlers, those board books are good. The sensory books are good. You always wanna make sure that reading is fun is interesting. So you can do that by making up a story or changing the ending or having your child make up a story to you. Or if you have older ones, you can have them read a story to your little ones. Make sure you visit your local library after everything is open back up and read everything around you. So during your social distancing walks, you can read the street signs or the addresses and things of that nature. Singing and rhyming together. Children love to sing. So you can find songs on the radio, on the TV, or you can simply make up a song. I encourage you to use rhyming words because children remember words of repetition and easy words that rhyme together. If you think about it, Dr. Seuss books do exactly that. They use the same few words over and over and it's just repetition. So a few things to remember. Children are never too young to be exposed to language and reading. Start reading as soon as possible. Your own home could be a literacy rich environment. Be patient. Don't get discouraged, you can do it and make it fun. If you have any questions, you can email me here. This is my contact information. You can visit our partnership social media pages and our website. And additionally, you can call Irvington office. And thank you for watching, bye-bye.